What's up dudes, Max here, back with another kind of informational tutorial series talking about stuff on YouTube, how you get your videos online on YouTube and how to produce stuff kind of similar to the ways that I produce videos. Once again, this is brought to you guys by Elgato, so at the end of this video I might ask you once again to leave a note below about getting a free Elgato Game Capture HD. But today we're going to be talking about kind of one of the more important things when it comes to doing videos online in any format, and that's editing. How do you get your video from like raw video feed to adding commentary or doing any type of simple editing from that point to YouTube? So, uh, the number one thing that you need to realize is that you need software to do this. Sometimes you get Windows programs like Windows Movie Maker that allows you to do certain things, and even some software tools like, in, for example, inside the Elgato actually give you the ability to do slight editing adjustments within its software. But if you really want to dig into stuff, you kind of need to go into external programs. And the single program I've used pretty much for the past three or four years has been Sony Vegas. I've stuck with Sony Vegas 12, um, actually sometimes Sony Vegas 11, sometimes Sony Vegas 12. It really depends. Uh, the reason I actually used this program initially is that there was this .m2ts file format for the longest time. And the only way you can use it is if you had Sony Vegas. So that's no longer the case. Everything works. You can use Adobe Premiere. You can use almost anything at this point, but it just really matters. They all do the same thing. That, that's all that matters is what I meant to say. You just need to find something that you can accustom yourself to. And the only thing I like about Vegas specifically over other editing programs is that you can do audio, you can do video, and you can do effects all within this program as long as you learn how to do it. It can be buggy, it can be weird, weird things do happen with editing, but if you get the hang of it, it goes really fast and you can get a lot of stuff done very quick. So let's take a look at the program first. Here we have the default interface of Sony Vegas. Over here down below is our timeline in this area, over here is several different things. Right now it's the project media, essentially when I start dropping in files, this is where they will appear. But you also get your explorer to search for files, you get transitional elements to go in between scenes, which it actually comes with several. And then you also get your video effects and media generators. Video effects are things like, you know, adding black and white or doing a chroma key, while media generators are actually producing things like colors, like a solid white color. We can see right here, I can just dump that right in. And all of a sudden we have a white that fills the screen. That's, that's, uh, that's all good, or you can do a, a text of some kind and then change your text to be something different than the re re like the re regular text. But this isn't exactly what we want to do right now. If you just want to add this stuff later, this is pretty simple. You simply just take it from the top and then drag it right down to the bottom and you get your default text layout. Now, what we really want to do is focus on the project media. Now, when you guys start going into editing and you start recording your videos, you're going to notice that you get a lot of different video files and you get audio. But you want you might want to do your audio separately so it doesn't get compacted into one like direct file or one direct track. The Elgato can do that, though. If you actually want to do everything in one, the Elgato, like we said before, will adjust the audio, depending if you want to actually have the game audio in the background go up when you're not talking and go down when you are, which is a cool feature, and sometimes a lot of people have to do that manually, or you record them separately. There's another program that you can use for this that is extremely cheap and very inexpensive, and it's called Audacity. And as long as you have a microphone like this one, you can essentially record directly into Audacity absolutely for free. And this thing is so simple to use, it's ridiculous. You can go to their website and download it, and just literally hit record. Well, we don't have a device in there right now because I can't hit record. But this thing does pretty much all you need to do. Once you have it, you would just export as a WAV file and then save that WAV file and go back into Sony Vegas. Now from here in Sony Vegas, let's just, let's just do something for example, like I'm gonna cut together a video of the Online Warrior or something. Let's get our footage. I'm gonna take this uh, fantastic clip of really old footage from Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and then drag it in here. You don't really need to import it directly. You can do this as like file import media and then go and f like fetch the file directly. But you don't even really need to do that. You can just actually drag things directly into the timeline or directly into the project media, which makes it very easy. And as we can see... Yep, that's some Marvel vs. Capcom 1 footage, all right. If you'll notice, we might not like how loud it is. You notice how it's like very loud up here? And then not so loud over here when we switch to Marvel vs. Capcom 2? That's because, well, they have different audio. Games have different audio balancing, so you'll have to work your way around this sometimes. 
and luckily it's very easy. You can control the overall volume of the entire track by this volume slider over here, or, if you'd like, you can actually go into the audio track delect directly. That's this one right here, which is attached to your video. They sync up naturally. And you can just take this slider, if you go to the top right here, I'll actually zoom in for you guys. You can go to the top right here and move this guy up and down, which turns the gain down significantly. And you can drop it to a level that you might like. Now, the nice thing about this is that when you finally get your, your other audio, your audio that you actually produce, you just get that file as well. Say like I just saved like my, my recent tier list video audio file. I'll just drag that in right down here. And voila, there it is. Tears and fighting games are important. And that's not me talking, that's indeed the audio file. That one you just drop into the layer right below. You can always mix and match these and kind of like pull them up or drag them down or pull them into different layers, but essentially what you want to do is kind of keep them in order. And a lot of the times if you're doing commentary for a video, at the beginning of your commentary you're going to want to do something like like sync it up. Like you're going to want to go to single player or multiplayer and just going, just tell yourself going down to single player now, going down to multiplayer now. That'll allow you to sync it up in editing when you actually do something a little bit later on to kind of like make it even with the game capture. But now that we have our game capture and we have our audio, we can actually do something. So, we have these two synced up right here and if I just wanted to take this part for example and just move it around, I have any part within this video I can actually move it to, and this is a very large video. So if I go like right here, for example, I want this to be my movie, this part, just to this part, you click on this area, any area that moves this little tab thing right here, and you press S to split. Split just splits the file on the timeline, so you can now move this around. These are now separate things, but as you can tell, it's not attached to the audio, so you gotta kinda be careful where you move it. And I wanna split the end of it too, so we're just gonna do that. Now we have a uh, something we actually wanna make a movie out of. So you can actually shift and select everything. So if you hold down shift at any point and click any files, you can move the whole thing around. But if I, like, if I don't shift and I just click on it, look, it just goes rogue all by itself. And of course, Control z works great for this stuff too. Now we want to add maybe a transition. If you use the scrolling mouse wheel on your, uh, on your mouse, you can zoom into Vegas to get a much closer view of what's going on. In the beginning, we have like nothing before, and as you'll see here, it just hard up, cuts dude? in Back with to... audio and goes right into everything, which we probably don't want. We want a nice smooth transition of some kind. So if you go to the very front, let's zoom in on this one so you guys can see it. The very front of the video clip right here, if you grab the left side to the top, you get this fade offset thing. And literally all it is, is you can, you can choose to move this thing left or right and actually extend your clip, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go to the top to that fade offset and just go and a little bit. And if we zoom back out, we'll, we'll see that if I frame by frame this using the, uh, the arrow keys on the keyboard, it very slowly fades in, so we have something like this. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? Max and it fades into our video. That's nice. That's, that's a nice little touch to stuff. You can also do the same thing to the audio, or the audio fades in, or I can even do it to myself. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? Max here, and, welcome and then it goes to its maximum volume. It's kind of up to you how you'd like to audio balance everything. But it, to me, I, I like hearing the music and I like hearing the characters in the opposite game. So you kind of want to focus on that if you do want to hear the other stuff. And of course, you would do the same thing to the very end. You'd fade out. And um, for example, if we wanted to add in like a music track of some kind, you do the exact same thing you did with your audio track. You get a music track that's related to your game or the soundtrack. You put that underneath where your audio track is. For example, when you put your VO in, I'll show you guys right here. Here's another audio track I created down here. You can go uh, insert video or insert audio. If I insert a video track, here's an additional video track and I just drag it down below. Make sure it's below, something that's very easy for you to see and you can kind of get an idea of how you want to balance that out just by going, grabbing the top and going up and down. And up and down is going to make it go louder or, or much less loud depending on how, uh, how ambient you want it to be. So now we have our video clip. We want to do something with this. So how do we get this from Vegas over to YouTube? And it's pretty simple. So right now we need to tell Vegas that we want this part to be selectable to render. We want this area to render specifically. And by doing so, we're going to put the cursor at the beginning of the video where we want the video to begin. And then we're going to zoom into the end 
and I'm just gonna hold shift and click so once again that's shift and click and you see how it made this little gray area above that says loop region that's pretty much your render area that's where Vegas is going to look to actually render the file and you can move this you know left or right you can go up here and grab it but we're just gonna put it right at the beginning of the video and right at the end and now we want to make this into a video of some kind so it's file and then render as and you're gonna see a whole bunch of stuff here I'm gonna zoom in on it so you guys don't get confused by this there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here right now the thing you also need to focus on is that when you initially have your um, your Vegas file open you want to be sure everything's kind of kosher the the video footage you have might be running at 60 or it might be running at 30 and if you want to find out what exactly is going on if you go above the preview window you're gonna see that there's this little project video properties click that and you should get an idea of what's going on right now it's at the 1920 by 1080 so we have a 1080p video running at 29.97 that's the appropriate um, that's the appropriate format for around 30 frames a second you want to use 29.97 and you can kind of copy everything else I'm using in here I'll zoom in for you this is essentially everything that I use so don't worry about changing this stuff I don't really worry about changing this stuff you can change this to best to make it a little bit better but uh, for the most part I kind of leave it as is now once you have all that figured out your video is running at 30 frames a second it's at 1080p you want to make it that you want it to be that we have our render loop region we go from file to render and let's zoom in on this one more time so we don't get confused the one the one I like to use for YouTube the most and this should come stock is main concept ABC slash AAC and if you go down to the bottom you get an option for internet HD 720 or internet HD 1080 click customize template and you can see what everything is going on you can tell that the frame size is 1920 by 1080 that's fantastic I'm not gonna allow the source to adjust the frame size we'll, we'll keep that off profile main just keep it on main I don't recommend changing that frame rate 29.97 just like before and make sure your pixel aspect ratio is absolutely set to 1 now down here we have one of the more important things which is bitrate you might know this from streaming as when you stream at like a certain bitrate it's the same thing for videos and when it comes to YouTube depending on your account status and what kind of videos you can make usually putting this at a constant bitrate at about 10,000 is pretty good you can go a little bit higher to 14 but these will be very big videos if you have a 10 minute video that's gonna be well over a gig so we'll be very cautious about how big these can get for quality but I'd say 10 is a pretty good place to start audio you're gonna wanna leave everything pretty much as is and system do the exact same and then finally in the project video rendering quality always choose best to get the best quality you possibly can and hit OK now before we render this out there's there's a very important thing that I should also mention about Vegas that's very weird that this thing also does when you normally drop a video file in here, there's naturally a motion blur. Vegas puts a motion blur on everything for some reason. If you right click the video, uh, any part of the video layer, that's this one up here, right click it, you're going to get a bunch of video options, but I want you go to go down to switches. And from switches, you're going to see smart resample, force resample, or disable. Let me zoom in on this so you guys can see it. Right click, switches. Let's scroll down switches smart force and disable for the love of God hit disable resample you do not want Vegas to add a motion blur it looks very weird it tries to emulate the frame rate it's normally at always make sure whenever you have a video file seriously you turn that thing off it's not it's really not good it does not look good in videos trust me turn it off and everything you do it's not worth it now once again we had our render settings we had everything good to go you just click render as back to main concept I'm gonna select that HD 8 uh, internet HD 1080p we're gonna name it something Let's test 5 you click render and voila a rendering will begin this will take upwards of more well, it actually completely depends on your CPU and once this is finished well it could take upwards of maybe an hour to two hours depending on how long your video is you take that mp4 file and it goes right into YouTube it's as easy as that Sony Vegas and editing programs can be a little complicated which is which is nice why the Elgato doesn't make you purchase additional software it does have that ability for you to actually put in your commentary and have it adjust things on the fly 
buy. Trust me, guys, if you don't want to deal with something like Vegas or getting into Sony Vegas and like spending money on it and everything that I had to do over many years, if you don't plan on doing crazy video editing, that might not be a bad solution. Because even in YouTube, there's several video editing options that you can do to transition or cut the beginning and end of your videos. It's not a bad option. If this helped you guys out, I appreciate a comment below. This is the stuff that I do absolutely every day. This is pretty much my life. And if I can give you exa an example of something that kind of takes a little bit more time and a lot more effort and you need to put a lot of work into, I'd say Boss Rage is a good example to see how extensive something can actually get. And I'll show you right now how crazy it can be when you get to a specific video that has a lot of editing like uh, Boss Rage. And I do all the audio, everything for that completely in Vegas. And here's what it looks like. Yep, we have an awful lot of video files, a lot, an awful lot of cutting, and many layers. There's just so much that you can do with this, that if you just want to keep trying stuff, you're not going to mess anything up. The wonderful thing about Vegas is that you can just control Z through things, and you can just go back and make an adjustment to whatever you might like. And with all this stuff, all this cuts, multiple audio tracks, multiple video tracks, all I'm doing is just pretty simple stuff just like I was saying, just a lot of splitting and organization. And you guys can literally do it too. I taught myself how to do this just because I wanted to make videos that bad. And if you guys do too, you totally can. If you guys want to also get a hold of an Elgato Game Capture HD, we're going to be giving one away on this video. And just like before, put a message below or any comment saying, I want that Elgato Game Capture HD, and I'll randomly select a winner a week from this video going up. I'll announce the winner on Twitter and Facebook, so check there first, and make sure if you do get a message from me on YouTube that it's me and not somebody else. Follow their channel back and make sure it goes to youtube.com slash miles923. If you want to get your hands on an Elgato Game Capture HD, leave that comment below, and in a week we'll come back with the winner. My name is Maximilian, and if there's something else you want to see me cover as far as like video production on YouTube, I'll be happy to help out. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next time.